Within this video, we're going to continue working through our lesson four wheel and axle of the Rube Goldberg machines. Specifically, we're going to go ahead and work through this engine activity, I met a blues DJ. So go ahead and follow along here inside of the PDF, and of course, follow along here inside of this video. Now it's very important to understand that we're actually going to be using a plugin built into the Unreal Engine. And if it's not turned on, go ahead and follow these steps. Come up here into the settings section up here in the very top right hand corner. Click on that and go ahead and open up the plugins. Instead of here in the search bar at the very top, go ahead and search for MetaSound. And you're going to want to make sure that this is actually toggled on. If it isn't, go ahead and toggle it on and you will need to restart the engine. It'll only take a moment, so go ahead and just do that. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're going to create. Now, the goal of this video is to get this Lazy Susan blueprint to continuously have a looping audio whenever it's spinning. So we're going to be working with both the meta sounds and this Lazy Susan blueprint to make this happen. Let's go ahead and create the meta sound first. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and open up the content drawer down here in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And then from our content folder, let's go ahead and go into the audio folder. And we can do that just by double clicking this folder right here. Anywhere inside of the blank area, go ahead and right click and come up into sounds. And at the very top, we're going to go ahead and create a meta sound source. Go ahead and name this one my loop and then press enter. To open this up, go ahead and just double click on it. Now you're probably going to get a floating window. So go ahead and click and drag on the tab up here at the very top and then just drag it up above till it docks. Now, if we want to navigate inside of this graph, we can simply just right mouse click and drag and we can actually drag left and right and up and down. We can also use our scroll wheel to zoom in and out and we can use our left mouse to click on any of these nodes and move them around or left mouse click and drag to create a box selection to select multiples. Now of these three nodes, we want to go ahead and delete this output node because if we have it in here, we can't actually make a looping sound. So to get rid of it, just go over here to the left hand side of the screen and underneath our interfaces, look for the UE source one shot and simply click on the little trash can icon right here. Next, we want to go ahead and create a node that's going to allow us to play a specific audio file. And we're looking for one that'll play a wave file. So to do this, we'll just right click anywhere inside of the graph where it's blank and type in the word wave player. And we're going to go ahead and use this wave player mono right here. Next, to get this to actually fire when we want, we have to pull a wire from the on play into the play. So simply left mouse click and drag from one pin to the other to create a wire. Now let's go ahead and choose the wave asset that we're going to use. Go ahead and click on the drop down and search for rolling underscore Susan. And then go ahead and choose this sound effect rolling Susan. The next thing we want to do is to make sure that this is going to loop. So we'll go ahead and toggle our loop on right here. The last part of this puzzle is that we want to go ahead and take our mono out and drag it into the output node. So there you have it. This is all the code that we're going to need. And if we want to test this, just come up here to the top of the interface and you'll find a play and a stop button. Now make sure your speakers are on, but not too loud and make sure that they're actually plugged in. So I'll just press this play button right here and then press the stop. So now we know that this is actually working and it's going to continue to the loop. So make sure that you save your work by clicking on the save icon up here in the top left hand corner. And then we can go ahead and close this down by clicking on the little tiny X of this tab. Now we need to go ahead and set up this blueprint actor so that when it's hit, it'll actually play that sound. So let's go ahead and open this up, look in the event graph and write some code. So with this object selected, a really quick way to actually open up the editor for it is to hold control or command on a Mac and press the E key as an echo to open it up. And you'll probably get another floating window. So let's go ahead and grab the tab and just dock it up here up above. Now the section of code that we're actually looking for is this yellow section down here at the very bottom. And to get down to it really quickly, just hover your mouse over it and use your scroll wheel to zoom in and you'll zoom into that location. I'm going to go ahead and use my right mouse and I'm just going to pull this over. So what we're actually looking at in this code is that when this component is actually hit, it's actually sending a signal down here below and it's going to play some sound effects. It's going to play one sound effect, a little button press. And then what we're going to do is connect another piece our sound effect right here. So then it'll play our loop next. And what's really nice is we have pretty much everything that we need right here. 
we're going to go ahead and play a sound at a location by using this node right here. And I'm just going to duplicate it. So with it selected, I'm just going to hit Control or Command on a Mac and D as in dog to duplicate it. And then just click and drag it over here a little bit. And then I want to go ahead and left mouse click and drag from this pin and connect it into this pin like so. Next, I want to go ahead and choose the sound that we had just created. So from this little drop down, I'll go ahead and click on this and type in my loop and go ahead and choose this asset right here. Now we do want to say where this is going to be playing in the world. And we do have our actor location right here. So we can simply click and drag from this yellow pin and drag it and connect it to this yellow pin right here. And that's it. That's all we have to do for this code. So up here on the top left hand side, let's go ahead and make sure that we compile and we're going to go ahead and save everything that we've done. And we no longer need our lazy Susan here. So we go ahead and close this down by clicking that little X right there. Now to test this efficiently, we want to make sure that we're actually close enough to this lazy Susan so that we can hear it. So with the lazy Susan selected, I'm going to press the F key on the keyboard so I can zoom in nice and close. And just for good measure, I'm going to hold down alt or option on a Mac left mouse, click and drag so that I can see when that truck actually bumps into one of the buttons on the bottom of this, then just go ahead and hit the play button. And we should hear a sound after that button is actually hit and the lazy Susan continues to spin. So there you have it. Now you know how to create a looping audio sound using Metasounds and hook it up inside of a blueprint so that when it is triggered, you can actually hear it.